Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit um, shorter. I just have two setups that I want to go over. Uh, one is kind of half played out. Um, sorry. If you're in my, something's always popping up on my screen. If you're in my discord, you already know about this gold cell, but I'll kind of go over it in a little bit more detail. And then I have a potential sell on US 30 and I'll kind of talk through that. Um, but it's going to be quick. Uh, and then I'm getting into like a new YouTube schedule. So what I'm thinking is that I'm going to start doing, um, like going to go back to Monday to Friday videos just because I'm just getting back to this channel. And I know that's like a lot to commit to, so I'm not fully committing yet. Um, cause I do want to make sure that, you know, I'm able to do that because I am launching, um, a new company. Uh, so I don't want to kind of bite off more than I can chew. So this is my gold sell from last week. The risk reward, I want to talk about this for a second. I've placed my stop loss based on A, structure. So four hour zones is what I use for structure. And then B, using the average true range. And I talk about that in other videos. I'll link the video down below where I show how to use that, but it's based off volatility, right? So in this case, I'm not getting a huge risk reward, but because this level is so likely to be tested, I was okay with the risk in taking a trade with a little bit of a smaller risk reward. So just keep that in mind. Normally, yes, I like a larger risk reward, but just in this case, I was fine with what I had here. Um, and it's really important also that like, you're not just blindly going for like a risk reward of uh, one to five or one to four, like to kind of showcase and get the largest risk reward you can get. I'm using you know, average volatility and structure and like paying attention to what I'm doing. And that's just what works best for me. So just keep that in mind. Um, but I did take this sell from this level in hindsight, I could have entered a little bit earlier, uh, based on the five minute candle instead of waiting because volatility was so high here. And like the market was a little bit choppy last week too. Um, but I could have went to the five minute and got a better entry again. I'm still okay with this. It's still playing out. And I did take partial. So how I take partials is I'll enter multiple trades using smaller lots and then just close out so many here. Um, and that's how I do it. Some people prefer to use a broker or like um, different EAs that allow you to take partials. I just prefer to stack trades. I find it much easier. Um, but I did take partials here at this zone because this has been tested in the past as well. What I'm waiting for though is a, um, a hit down here. I think it's 185. I'd like to see price come down to this level, this level because if you if we zoom out, you can see that this level has been tested a lot, right? That's a major zone. So I'm hoping that we do get a touchdown there, but I guess we are going to find out hopefully this week. You can get into the trade here. So what I would do, I would day trade this. So I would wait till we can see how tomorrow plays out or Tuesday, depending on, um, sometimes gold likes to consolidate a bit like it did here when I, before I was entering this trade until like Tuesday, that's when you'll really see a move. Um, you can go down to the five minute or 15. You can use the 15. I like the five. I find I get better entries when I'm day trading and this is going to look ugly now because of all of these. I'm actually going to delete that for a second. And you can find a smaller zone. I wouldn't mark in a five minute zone. I'm not even going to hesitate to do that. Or I'm not, I'm not even going to pretend to do that, but you can go to the 15 minute chart and I call those micro zones. Um, and that would just help you. So here, let me show you what I'm talking about. Sorry. I don't know why my computer is being a little bit slow. It's not really liking me too much. So how I would draw in a, what I call micro zone, that's just a term like I use. It's, I don't know if there's a better term for it that you want to use. You certainly can. Um, same method. So I'd look for an engulfing candle. I'd look for a round number, round number level 1710. I could see multiple touches through 1710. Um, and then around that number, we can find an engulfing candle. So we do have one here and then we have another one here. This is right at 17, let me see, 1710, this one here. Now this candle's very small, but you can also box in the, um, 
the engulfing candle if you want to get like a better area. I'm just trying to find a better example, but I don't want to spend too much time on this either. Okay. I'm going to keep that there. So we're using a much smaller zone here. When I draw in a micro zone or a 15 minute zone, basically whenever I use a different time frame, I do change the color of the zone. Um, and again, I'm using a nice round number level that's been tested multiple times. Oops. What does it mean when price tests a level multiple times? Well, I can see multiple wicks at this level. So it's more likely to reverse there. Not hundred percent, but it's, it's more likely, right? So what you can do to get a good entry and try to get in this trade is wait for price to retest this level. Oops. What did I do here? I'm trying to find, no, <laughs> I'm trying to find an arrow. Okay, here we go. Um, retest this level. We want to see rejection, right? On the 15 minute, five minute, it's really not reliable on the 15 minute. And then when we start to get a push down, it's not always going to stop there. You can see in this case, right? It certainly didn't. Um, in mul at multiple other points in time, it would have worked. So you can see if you get rejection and then confirmation. And I want to show you something actually not to ramble on too long, but I, I do want you to pay attention to this right here. So yes, price showed rejection at this level, right? But look at the next candle on the 15 minute. This one right here. Had you waited for confirmation, you probably wouldn't enter that because when the 15 minute candle closed, which should be happening in order for you to enter, um, or you can go down to the five minute if you prefer, just depending on, um, the time frame you usually use and uh, what type of trader you are, of course, but you would see that this is really choppy, right? So I don't know exactly what was happening around here. I'd have to go back and look, but this could be high impact news or anything like that. So, because it did push right back down, right? Um, so you want to wait for rejection and then let's switch to the five minute time frame. Um, and I'll show you what I would, oh my God, this drives me nuts. That you always have to switch back. I don't think TradingView used to be like that, did it? Maybe I have a weird setting. Someone let me know. Um, so we're going to wait for a strong push downward, okay? And you don't want to see, you know, super long wicks. Again, what you want to see, and I will show you obviously an example also by scrolling backward, but you want to see a nice long body right? And you don't want your wicks to be super long in relation to the body. So we wouldn't want that. It's okay if the wick is a little bit long, um, but in relation to the body, you don't want it to be too long. Okay. So a nice standard strong candle would be good. Now, if we go back, we can see that like either of these would be great this candle here, this candle here. Okay. Um, and I know it keeps coming back up to this level. It's very common to see price, um, continue to retest this level and act a little bit choppy, especially in the summer. This is not surprising to me. It's why I haven't moved out of this trade. I'm still holding it. Uh, but what we can do if you get that is place another position or place a position. Um, and this is something I might do this week too. Oops, wrong section. So if we did get that confirmation candle, you want to place, I'm just going to put an arbitrary stop loss, guys, because I don't want to bring out the ATR. I'm going to make this way too long. Look, I'm doing it again. This annoys me so much <laughs> that it automatically plots. Is there a setting I can use, guys, that will help me with that? Because it annoys me. Um, so what I would do is grab obviously the average true range indicator again, place this above structure. Um, and you could place it above this recent, um, little retest, like where we saw that slippage, or you could even, if you want to take a smaller, um, risk reward, like, which this isn't small, it's still a risk reward ratio of three or 3.5. You can place it below this previous high here. Um, and that's another way you can, you can re-enter, right? So you can re-enter the trade. So that's just one idea for you. I probably will. And I did that actually, um, this week when price retested this level up here. So I did the same, I applied that same concept. I went to the lower timeframes and I got back in. 
I apologize. I'm trying to keep zoomed in so that this doesn't look terrible when I zoom all the way out. Okay, let's move on to US 30 because I do have another setup. Now, right off the bat, um, I know some people question, because sometimes I will take a sell on both, both US 30 and gold. Yes, some people think that they are um, correlated and over the long term, they do tend to be correlated, right? Um, and this is really debatable. Some people say they are, some people say they're not when it comes to metals and indices. However, um, this is A, this is going to be a shorter term trade on US 30 and B, by the time we get up to the point that I'm looking at, gold might have already hit the previous level and reverse. So I'm not paying too much attention to that correlation because again, I'm not trading a super long term positional trade or a super long term swing trade. This is more what I'm looking to get in this week. So I just wanted to address that. But what I'm looking for is, so I'm looking at this zone. I actually had this zone placed lower and I moved it up. So once I saw kind of price action from last week and how price was acting to this level, I did move it. Um, so if you're in my discord and you see that it's not the same, that's why this is something I will do. I'm um, very open about this. I will move zones if price is respecting them in a specific way, I don't mind doing that if it gives me a better setup. And what I'm seeing here, so I'm going to get my horizontal line tool and put it through so we can see that there's an area here. I can notice this right away. And again, I'm used to eyeballing these levels, right? But I can see here that there's a level price has touched or these wicks have touched multiple times, right? This is of interest to me. This is something I will try to trade because we're seeing a lot of rejection from it. Now I want a round, level, round number level again. Um, so we can try, oh, I just did it again. This really, <laughs> this really drives me freaking nuts. Someone help me with that. Okay, so I think it's 31.4 is gonna be the level if I can, oh, I actually got it. Nice. Um, and we still have multiple wick touches there and it's a nice even round number level. Again, I do that because price tends to respect round number levels better, but we're working with an area. So if you don't want to use round number levels, you certainly don't have to, unless you're trying to snipe an entry, which I personally don't do because I swing trade, then it's no big deal. Um, and I will look for price to come up to this area, show rejection again and take a sell. So that is a trade that I um, might take. Sorry, when I'm going silent, it's because I'm thinking of other things and looking at other things. I haven't gone over this in this video, but for those of you who follow my other videos, if you looked at last week, and I didn't go over this with gold, but the reason I'm looking for sells, I'm not interested in looking at buys from this level. It's totally cool if you do. And to be honest, you could get great entries and trade that way. Um, a lot of people trade reversals quite successfully. I personally don't. I like to trade with the trend. And how I determine that, this is actually the 200 daily EMA. I just use this indicator on trading view to keep it on my chart. So that way, if I go to the four hour chart, the 15 minute chart, it's still there. Um, I can, let's see if I have it in my favorite. Oh, okay, good. Always show daily EMA. For some reason, all of my favorites don't always show up. I don't know what's happening there. It's like a little bug I'm having, but anyway, that's why I thought it might not be there, but that's the indicator. It just keeps it there. And when I always look at the 200 daily EMA to see which way I'm trading. So if price is below the 200 daily EMA, I'm looking for sells. Doesn't mean I'm always in a sell trade. I obviously have to wait to get to specific levels, but that's what I, I trend trade, right? I, I follow the trend. Um, and unless we break that level or price is going through that level, if price was going through, or if the line was going through price, sorry, I just wouldn't be trading it. And if it's broken, then I'll start looking for buys. So that's just something to keep in mind also. Um, so again, I'll look for a rejection candle like this one and then a nice confirmation candle. And I'll just give you another example of what I would look for there. Um, so a nice push away from that zone. I would look for that on the five minute time frame. I didn't mean to put that arrow in. That's just me being silly. Let me go to the 15 minute and just show you. We'll go back. So this guy is just, this guy's really long. I'm not gonna, I wouldn't use him. 
because we would just not get a good risk reward. If this happens, then you're probably not going to get get a great entry using my method anyway, but even this guy would be fine or any of these candles here. So you just want like a solid push and what you don't want to see is, you know, like a doji like this one that I'm circling. You don't want to see something like this with a really long wick. We don't want to see indecision. And that's just my personal method of doing that. That's all. I'll keep you guys posted about the daily videos. They're not going to start this week, um, but perhaps next week. Join my Discord. Uh, I'll put the free Discord in my, um, come on, words, description. I'll also put my Instagram there for those of you who don't follow me there. And I think that's it. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.